Hello, my name is Chris, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us for today's Tenant Cloud podcast. This is going to be part of a series on how to find a tenant quickly. And I'm going to cover a lot of the best practices, in fact, 20 or more best practices on how to market your rental properly, even in competitive markets, so that you can find tenants quickly for your rental property, how to reduce turnover, how to reduce uh, the amount of time that your property sits vacant after one tenant leaves and you're waiting for the other to move in or trying to find a new tenant for your rental. The goal of having a rental property is to constantly have a tenant inside the rental paying rent because obviously that is where your cash flow comes from is rental income. And so this entire series is going to be covering that topic on how to make sure that you are constantly having tenants inside your rental, even if you have somebody moving out, how to find somebody to move in potentially the day after your current tenant moves out, believe it or not. And so uh, this is a lot of information that is coming from my own personal experience, uh, but a lot of these are just simply tried and true methods in the uh, property management industry. And so if you're new to this podcast, we try to keep these podcasts short and sweet, but full of information that's going to help you run your property management and your rental business company better, more efficiently, and get the biggest bang for your buck. So without further ado, the first part of this series we're going to cover, and uh, again, we're going to try to go through this pretty quickly, is uh, how to find a tenant quickly. And so the first step of that process is creating a rental listing. If you have never created a rental listing before, uh, those rental listings are what go out online. So for instance, if you create a rental listing, you can create it on Tenant Cloud, for instance, and then you can syndicate that rental listing out to any number of um, major rental listing websites such as apartments.com or Zillow, Hotpads, Trulia, Rentler, and so on and so forth. And the goal of creating a rental listing is it is basically that first impression that somebody has. It's the thing that's going to get the person's interest in your rental property early on. And if you cannot get the interest of a potential rent renter with your rental listing, then you're going to find it's a going to be a really difficult time of getting potential leads to come in for your rental. So the rental listing is going to be the most important part of your rental marketing strategy. And so for that reason, it's very important to get it right. And uh, tenants, potential tenants in your area are probably looking at dozens, if not hundreds of listings on any given website that they're on or mobile app. And so yours really has to stand out and it really needs to stand out quickly because people have short attention spans, especially online. And so uh, the first part of a good solid rental listing is going to be high quality photos. I cannot tell you how many times, even to this day, when I'm browsing through rental listings online, that there are terrible photos of really nice rental properties. And you can kind of tell that the rental property is probably pretty nice, but the photos on the rental listing are awful. Uh, or maybe they are vertical listing photos, which look terrible on almost every single rental listing website out there. So uh, key, side note is try not to use vertical images of any room or anything that you're taking a photograph of your rental property. Always try to use landscape photos only. Also landscape videos only, unless of course you are putting your videos on places like uh, TikTok or uh Instagram or somewhere, some other platform where the vertical, uh, the vertical video makes sense. Uh, if you're putting it on YouTube, that doesn't make sense. Put it in landscape. Uh, so those are just some key tips for photos and videos. The next biggest thing. Oh, and with the photos, it's important to make sure that you photograph as much of the property as possible. You don't want to go overkill, but I've also seen a lot of properties where there's just a few photos. There's five photos, but it's a 3,000 square foot apartment or house, or it's a even if it's a 1,500 or 1,200 square foot rental property, and there's only five or six photos. Like that's great, and you might have highlight the bathroom or the kitchen or the main living area, but people tend to want to have more photos. It instills a little bit more confidence and trust in somebody when you photographed the entire rental property and you have a picture of each bedroom and you have a picture of the basement if there is one you have a picture of the living room and the family room and the dining room and the kitchen and maybe if you're you talk about a deck well they probably want to see a picture of the deck 
and so on and so forth. So it's important that you get pictures of both outside and inside. And one of the key photos that you need to take and put on your rental listing is a uh, curb appeal photo, a photo taken from the curb, just as if somebody were pulling up to your rental listing to take a look at it the first time. And it's important to have that photo, even if it's not your highlight photo, it's not the first photo that's featured on the rental listing. It does need to be in your rental listing because people want to see what the property looks like from the street. And it's also going to help when, them when they come to tour your rental property. If they already know, hey, this is what the rental property is going to look like. This is what I'm looking for when I get there that way. If they're uh, GPS gives them slightly wrong directions or it says it's on the other side of the street when it's not, they have that photo to reference and be like, oh, okay, no, it's that one right there on that side of the street. The, the GPS is wrong. Uh, that happens a lot, believe it or not, even to this day. And so having that curb appeal photo goes a long way towards uh, helping potential renters, A, identify your property and B, also uh, just seeing it from the outside in a photo is like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. I I like it. I like the property. And it also shows them that you're taking care of the property. So when you take that picture from the curb, it needs to be as you would want the property to be seen for the first time by a potential renter. So the grass needs to be cut, edged, bushes need to be trimmed, lights need to be, uh, light fixtures need to be straight and on, and the gutters can't be hanging off the roof, and the roof can't have stuff all over it, and uh, so on and so forth. The paint colors, it needs to be good. It can't be faded or have uh, water stains down the side of the siding, that type of stuff. So you want to make sure that the picture represents what the property, uh, what you want the property to look like when somebody first walks up to it. The second thing is to do an HD walkthrough video and or a 3D tour. Uh, again, this is extremely important. A lot of websites are starting to push listings to have these things. In fact, some of them are even highlighting listings, rental listings that have video or 3D tours featured on them over other listings. And so it's important to have these things done. This is 2020, 2022, and uh, everybody is highly interested in video, highly engaged through video. It's everywhere you look on TikTok and Snapchat and Facebook and Instagram. Video is what is being pushed. Video is what is popular and video is what people trust. It's easy to manipulate a photo, but it is not as easy to manipulate a video. And so a lot of people prefer video. So if you have the ability, you have a smartphone, uh, let's say you can shoot it in 1080p or 4K. It's important to be able to do those and it needs to be good quality. It needs to be something that uh, doesn't look like a five-year-old picked up your camera and walked through the rental property and then you uploaded it online. It needs to be stable. So if you don't have image stabilization, uh, maybe consider getting a gimbal for your phone or your camera to make sure that it is stable as you're walking through the rental or just pay somebody else to do it. There's lots of companies out there that do it. Uh, there's uh, even options to buy equipment pretty relatively cheap these days compared to what it's been in the past to do even the 3D tours uh, where you can even shoot it with your smartphone as well uh, using software. So there's a lot of options out there. Uh, certainly you can go the paid route where you pay a contractor, a company to come out and do it. Uh, those aren't necessarily the cheapest routes, although they have gotten cheaper over the years. When I first did my first one back in like, 2015, I believe it was 2014 for a 3D tour, a walkthrough tour. Um, it was pretty expensive. I want to say it was somewhere around five to seven hundred dollars just for one rental. Um, but it was very efficient. People loved it. It was a very early thing uh, where you could go online, you could click through and walk through the rental property. I'm sure you've seen them. Uh, you could literally, it felt like you were there on your screen walking through and you could click and tell the screen where to go in the rental property. You could walk, quote unquote, into the kitchen. You could walk into the bedroom and so on. You could walk up the stairs and it was, it was a really cool new technology, but now it's pretty mainstream and people kind of are just coming to expect it. And so if you're not doing anything like that, I'd highly recommend doing it. The third thing that you want to emphasize in your listing is the location. Uh, if the location is a prime location, 
uh, if it is, even if it's, if you don't think it is a prime location, there's a buyer for everything. There's a renter for everything. And some people are looking for quiet and peace and solitude. Other people are looking for being downtown right in uh, the heat of things. And other people are just looking for proximity to their work or to uh, their kid's school or so on and so forth, or maybe even in a school district, a certain school district. And so highlighting highlighting the location of your rental property is extremely important and making sure that people understand where your rental property is. So not just the map, because obviously it's going to show them on the map where it is, but highlighting it in the text of your listing to say, this rental property is located here and these are the things that are nearby. So whether that's a grocery store or transportation or certain school districts or uh, certain major companies and so on and so forth. It's also gonna help you with your SEO, your search engine optimization. So when people go to look for rental listings and they type in things, apartments near such and such, maybe it's a major company in a major city or a school in a city, and your rental listing says this rental property is located near this school or this business, then you're going to increase the opportunity for your rental listing to show up based on search engine optimization. And so it's important to highlight the location of your rental property in your rental listing. Number four, you wanna highlight property features. Uh, what I mean by property features is things like alarm systems. If you're living in a city and there's a lot of crime, then you probably wanna have an alarm system for the tenants. And so it's probably important to highlight that for your tenants. Uh, internet, what type of internet do you have? Is it cable? Is it uh, fiber internet? Is it uh, line of sight internet? Like what type of internet is it? Is it reliable? Is it fast? Is it 100 gigabytes um, per second? Is it 10 megabytes per second? What is it? Because the person who's interested in your rental, maybe they work from home. Maybe they are somebody who deals with a lot of video type content. And those are the type of questions and answers they're going to want up front. And so specifying how fast your internet is, believe it or not, is a big deal these days. And so you want to make sure that your property highlights how fast the internet is, especially if you have really fast internet at your rental property. Um, fitness space, is there fitness? Uh, is Does a garage come with it? Does storage come with it? How much storage is it? How many square feet is it? You want to be detailed for your rental listing because people care about the details. You never know what the person who's looking for a rental property cares about. And maybe they don't care about a fitness space, but maybe they do care about how much storage space there is. And they might want to know how many square feet of storage space. Does it come with organization shelves or is that something they're going to have to provide themselves? And maybe it's a renter who's concerned about security and that's going to be where the alarm system comes into play. And so there's a lot of things that you want to make sure uh, if you have them at your rental to highlight your rental property for those things so that people uh, know right off the bat, like, oh, this has the thing that I care about. Number five is highlight local amenities. Uh, kind of discuss this a little bit with location um, on number three, but with uh, number five is local amenities. You wanna highlight anything that is a local amenity near you. So maybe if you don't have a fitness center, maybe you put in your listing that you are located just three blocks from a fitness center and name the fitness center. Maybe it's a 24 hour fitness or an LA fitness or whatever it is. Uh, you wanna highlight that because if somebody again is concerned about that, it may be a compromise. Maybe the rental doesn't have it, but it's down the street, so that's fine. And so you wanna highlight those things. You wanna highlight maybe there's a really cool uh, coffee shop nearby. Person might care about coffee. And so you could put this coffee shop is a block away or this rental property is walkable to these places or the walk score. If you've ever looked up a walk score online, a lot of people look up the walk score. So maybe just put the walk score in your rental listing. Say this has a 95 uh, walk score, which means typically that it's really walkable. They can access all kinds of stuff without needing a car. Maybe they just use a bike. Um, and so highlighting local amenities are a big deal. So keep all of those things in mind when creating a rental listing. One, high quality photos. They need to be, at the very least, they need to be HD photos. Second, they, they should be uh, photos that are very high resolution uh, that 
they showcase the entire property, both the inside and the outside. You don't want to overkill it and show 10 photos of the same bedroom from different angles, but you do want to make sure that each room of the rental is featured. And if there are things that your photo doesn't capture on one side of the room, you may want to add a second photo of the other side of the room or taken from the other side of the room from a different perspective. Uh, HD walkthrough video and or 3D tours. People have just come to expect stuff like that these days. So make sure you try to get something like that included in your listing. The location, it's important to emphasize and detail where the location is. Yes, it's on the map on the listing, but people care about the details of the location. And there may be things that they don't see on the map. Maybe they didn't scroll in far enough on the map for the smaller businesses to show up. Like if you're on Google Maps and you, you don't scroll in far enough, it's not gonna show you every business. It's just gonna highlight certain things. So highlight things about the location of your rental in the actual text of the rental listing. And highlight property features, alarm systems, internet, fitness space, a garage, etc. And highlight local amenities, uh, such as if there's a coffee shop nearby, maybe if you don't have a fitness space in your rental, but maybe there's a fitness place down the street. Is it bikeable? Is it walkable? All of that good stuff. And last but not least, most importantly, make sure that the listing is accompanied by a colorful and professionally written description of the rental property. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen a rental listing that they've done everything else right, or maybe they haven't, doesn't really matter, but the rental listing just says three bed, two bath, located near such and such university and is available on December 1st, 2022. And that is the worst possible written description of a rental property that you could possibly do. Make it colorful, make it exciting, make it something that the person is like, wow, I really wanna check this property out. And so not just including these details that I just mentioned that are important as a part of any rental listing property, but also making, bring it to life, bring the listing to life for the person, make them want to feel like they want to see this place, they have to see this place. And really pump it up in their minds when they're reading the listing like, wow, this is a really cool rental property. Um, it's that first impression of your rental listing. And so if you don't have colorful descriptions and you're just very robotic in the way that the description is done, it, it's just impersonal. And it's not going to create an impression in somebody's mind. It's not gonna be memorable to a person. It's okay to have humor and to be fun with the rental listing. It's okay to be colorful and descriptive and exciting. You don't have to be robotic with your rental listing. In fact, uh, I don't have the studies and stuff in front of me right now, but one of the things that I've read a lot about recently is the current generations are actually tired of things that are staged and things that are come across as fake or things that uh, are portrayed as perfect or robotic or whatever. They want authenticity. They want something that seems and feels real and genuine. And so uh, those same people are now the largest rental demographic in the United States, and they're only going to continue to grow to be that. And so it's important to cater to the your audience and to speak to your audience and to use the language and the things that they uh talk with and how they talk and uh, to attract their attention and engage them and to get them to click that button that says schedule a tour or call this person and inquire about the rental listing or submit an application. And so uh, hopefully this information has been helpful to you. And I, as always, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us for this podcast. And uh, keep in mind, we have a lot of content on our Tenant Cloud YouTube channel, also at tenantcloud.com forward slash blog. And uh, so if you haven't followed this podcast, if you're on the Apple podcast uh, system, go ahead and leave us a review and follow us there. And we'll look forward to uh, talking with you next time.